Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the first iteration of my fully portable, battery-powered, touchscreen Raspberry Pi 400 setup. Now this one is a bit messy, but like I mentioned, this is my first iteration. I'm actually waiting on a couple more of these Raspberry Pi 400s to come in so I can start doing some internal modifications. But the way I have this set up right now requires no soldering, you don't have to open anything up, and it's basically plug and play. So the display I'm using here is a portable monitor from Pepper Jobs. It's the Extend Touch Pro. It's a 13.3 inch IPS display with touch built in. It looks absolutely beautiful, but I will admit it is a bit expensive for a build like this. And it wasn't purchased specifically for this build. It's just a portable monitor that I use. It has HDMI built in and USB Type-C input. Now with the touch setup, I do have to have three wires going to the Pi 400. We have one for touch, one for power, and one for HDMI. If you opted for a monitor without touch, all you would need is two wires coming off the Pi 400 because we don't need that USB to the monitor itself to enable touch. But I gotta say, this actually works out really well with the Raspberry Pi 400, and I completely understand that this is definitely not for everybody. If you already have a little laptop to carry around, that's probably what you're going to be using, be it Linux or Windows. But I also know that there's a lot of people out there that are really interested in the Raspberry Pi, and specifically the new Raspberry Pi 400, so I figured I'd go ahead and get this video out of the way. I'm going to go over all the parts I used. We're going to go over how I set this up. It's super easy to do. Like I said, there's no soldering. It's plug and play. And when it's all broken down, all of this can fit easily inside of a book bag. Okay, so first things first, the Raspberry Pi 400. Chances are, if you're watching this, you're already familiar with the Raspberry Pi 400, but I'm going to go ahead and give you a quick overview. Basically, the Raspberry Pi Foundation built a custom PCB with the same chip that's in the Raspberry Pi 4 and slammed it inside of a keyboard. It's got 4 gigs of RAM, and the CPU is actually clocked a little higher than the Pi 4 at 1.8. And for this whole setup, I've added a cheap wireless mouse. Next up, we have the battery pack. Now, you can go much larger with this if you want to. I opted for this one here. It's a 10,000 milliamp hour battery. It's got a full-size USB port and USB Type-C. And we're going to be powering the Pi 400 from the USB Type-C port because it will put out 5 volts, 3 amps. Now, I do have bigger battery packs laying around, which will net me more runtime. I kind of wanted to keep everything as small as possible. Plus, the smaller battery packs were recently on sale at my local Walmart for 8 bucks, and I picked up 3 of them so I can keep these charged and just swap them out when I need to. Next on the list, I have my HDMI cable. also have a micro HDMI adapter to plug it into the monitor. USB Type-C to USB Type-C, and that's what's going to be powering the Pi 400. Power is going to be running directly from the USB Type-C port on the battery pack to the Pi 400. I also have two USB Type-C cables. One's going to be used to power the monitor. The other one's going to be plugged into the Pi to the monitor to enable touch. We need a USB connection there to get touch up and going. And finally, the monitor itself. I'm using the Pepper Jobs Extend Touch. It's IPS, 13.3 inches with touch built in, but you can opt for a non-touch display for much cheaper on Amazon, like this one here. It definitely doesn't look as good, and it doesn't have touch functionality, but it will get you by. And you won't have to run three cables from the Raspberry Pi 400. You'll just need two cables, one for power, one for HDMI. So I'm going to go ahead and give you a rundown on how I set this all up. Okay, so on the side of this Extend Touch monitor, we have mini HDMI and two USB Type-C ports. One of those USB Type-C ports is going to run from the battery to power the monitor, and the other one's going to run from the Pi 400 to enable touch. Now I will say that the USB 3.0 port on the Pi 400 can power these monitors, but you can't turn the brightness all the way up, and that's why I'm going to be sending separate power from my battery pack to the monitor itself. And even if you go into the config.txt of your Raspberry Pi and set max USB current, you still can't get full brightness. The USB port just doesn't put out enough amperage to keep these at full brightness. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to plug in here is my HDMI. Mini HDMI to the monitor, micro HDMI to the Pi 400. Next thing I want to do is use one of the USB 3.0 ports on the rear of the Pi 400 to enable touch to the monitor. So we're going to use a separate USB Type-C cable. And this is going to allow us to enable touch over USB to this touchscreen monitor. So as you can see, it's starting to get a little bit messy, but we can clean this up once we have everything plugged in. And one thing that I've been searching for on Amazon are shorter cables, but I need some high quality stuff. The next thing I want to do is take my battery pack and the other USB Type-C cable and plug this right into the power input on the monitor itself. This is going to send power from that battery pack to the monitor. And finally, the last thing I need is power to the Raspberry Pi 400. So from the USB Type-C port on the battery pack, 
we're going to go right into the USB Type-C port on the Raspberry Pi 400 and it's going to start booting up. And yeah, we definitely have a mess of cables here, but this can be cleaned up if you're using longer cables, but I'd say the best bet would be by three foot or two foot cables. That's something that I've personally been looking for lately. But most of these portable monitors do come with a folio case here, and we have that triangular opening on the rear, and all of this can be placed inside of there. I would recommend using some type of rubber band or even Velcro system to get everything cleaned up. I'm going to go ahead and do that now to make it look a little more appealing. And I've actually taken my battery pack out to the side here because it does have a battery indicator. It's usually inside of here. But if I just press this one time, it'll give me my battery indicator. I'm at 63% now but this can all be inside of that folio case so you never see it. Now initially going into this, I was expecting to be able to power these monitors over one of the USB ports on the Pi 400, but like I mentioned, if we go to full brightness and it's set up that way, the monitors just kick off. Now they're rated at one amp and I guess that's at about 25% brightness. And when we go up even further, it's gonna go over 1.2 amps and that's the maximum we can pull from one of the USB ports on the Pi. So I did have to end up adding that extra cable from the battery pack to power the monitor properly, but overall it really doesn't bug me. Now I can go full brightness with this and I don't have to worry about it pulling too much amperage from the Pi and shutting off. But it does work well like this and we're completely on battery power. The monitor and the Pi 400 are all battery powered right now. You can actually pull this out of your backpack, all the little cables and everything like that, and have it set up in under a minute and a half. But I personally wouldn't recommend rushing out and buying everything to build something like this. I would spend my money somewhere else, like an inexpensive Chromebook or a laptop. But this was something that I wanted to put together since the announcement of the Pi 400, and I actually happen to have everything that you see here on hand, so I figured I could whip it up like it sits. So I swapped out my battery. I'm doing some testing with the 20,000 milliamp hour battery. And just to give you a look, I don't have any extra cables going in here. Everything is battery powered. And I suspect I'm getting around three hours out of the 10,000. I should get around six hours out of the 20. So yeah, I personally think this is a cool little setup, but then again, you know, I thought it was cool to throw a 2080 Ti on a dual core, low end single board computer. And I still stand by that. I still think that was also a pretty cool little setup. So it really comes down to how you look at it. I'm a big fan of the Raspberry Pi and low powered ARM single board computers to run as desktops or gaming systems. So something like this is appealing to me. Now, would it be worth it to go out and buy all of the parts that you see in this video to build something like this? Personally, I would suggest against it. I would save that money and buy a nice little Windows laptop. But in the end, it's really up to you. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. Let me know what you think about this little build in the comments below. If you have any suggestions on different monitors that I could use or anything like that, I'd also like to know. Keep an eye on the channel because I will have a few more videos coming up soon on the Pi 400. But like always, thanks for watching.